So we have our workbook open that we finished in the last video. Before we get started with this one, I want to mention that the exercises that I'm doing in the videos, there's also a Word document that has the directions written out completely. So if from now on it's easier for you to follow those and do the exercises or watch the video, then use the Word document, use it in whatever combination for you to learn and review some basic Tableau. I know some of you have had it in other classes, uh, some may not, so that's why I'm kind of starting at the beginning to some extent. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus sign on the tabs on the bottom to start a new worksheet. We're going to go ahead and uh, this is slightly different uh, than the directions. We're going to click on sales and rather than clicking on state as the directions say, we're going to do postal code. So which is going to be basically zip code. By the way, I held down the control key here to click on postal code. So both of them are displaying. I'm going to go over to show me now if it's not displaying, just click on show me. And what that's doing is saying what charts or visualizations are best for using a combination of a measure in this case sales and postal code or zip code. So we can have it be a filled in map, but since we're going down to a zip code level, we want to show individual dots for each store. So I'm going to click on this first map and it'll take a second to uh, draw. So now if you look at this map, you can see individual postal codes. So for example, here you have a Waterloo zip code and you have a Cedar Falls zip code and you can see the sales accordingly in these stores. Um, the sales are in hundreds of thousands, so it is larger than $307 in a store. So this um, is kind of a superstore. Uh, think of a Staples uh, office supply superstore. So they're selling office supplies and other things that you would find in a store such as Office Depot, etc. So we can see the stores. We can see some larger circles. Uh, for higher sales. So basically each of these circles, the larger the sales, the large, the higher or bigger the circle, sorry. So let's click on this size button here. Under marks, there's size. There's a little scroll bar. We can move it a little bit to the right and that kind of just makes the circles a little bit bigger. I usually go about halfway, especially when I have this much detail. You can go a little bit big off to the right you don't want to go all the way to the right because, well, as you see, uh, you just have a whole bunch of big blue blobs. So I'm going to go just slightly to, mid, to the right of midpoint. Okay, um, that's not bad. So we can still see all the dots here. Good. Um, we can scroll into different areas and then we can hold down uh, the shift key and drag it so it recenters if I make it a little bit larger. If I hit control, it's going to select a certain area. We usually don't want to do that. So hold down the shift key to recenter. I can then scroll back out using the plus minus buttons here. So if you are doing a visualization and you want to focus on the Midwest, enlarge it and then just move your center so it's focused here on the Midwest. All right, I'm going to go back out so we see the entire United States. Oops, a little too far there. Okay, and I'll just kind of recenter it. Okay, so, so far so good. What we want to probably add is we want to see where stores are profitable. So let's keep size for sales, but let's take profit and drag it to color. So in this case, if I get rid of show me, you see a scale that the darker the blue, the higher the profit, the darker the red or orange, I should say, in this case, the larger the loss. Let's go ahead and click on color and edit that. What we really want to do is go to advance and make our center zero, just in case. If this time you want to make it to red and green, just to be a little more accountant-like, we'll go ahead and do that. 
So feel free to tweak it as you would like here. All right, so one thing I might want to do now is we have different product categories. So we have the ability to filter. Now this works similar to a filter in pivot tables. So I'm gonna drag product category to filters. Okay, and it brings up a list. So what we can do is select that we only want to see furniture. So now it's only showing furniture. What I'm going to do is click on this, the drop down with the filter and I'm going to say show filter. This makes it a little easier for an end user to switch and go to, for example, office supplies. Or we could go to furniture or technology. So we can see that technology doesn't do well here in probably right around Bozeman. Um, I'm not sure what city this is in Colorado. Uh, so let's go back to furniture. We see some areas, Galesburg here is not doing well. We see some larger area here, kind of in the Tampa area. So we can use that to filter different areas. If we want to see more detail, we could go ahead and take product category out and take product subcategory. And this has a lot more categories, so you might want to select one at a time. I'm going to go to tables. And you'll notice that there's a whole lot of red in the tables, right? So let's also look at that by order date. So let's put a order date filter. And I'm going to say we're going to look at it by year. So I'm going to select year. So let's look at it for just 2013. So we can, we're in this case, we're looking at tables for just 2013. So when you're doing your project, uh, feel free to use the filters, but um, you know, in your paper, refer to what filter you're using if you're uh, looking at something in particular. So say you filtered it on tables for 2013, if you're trying to explain something. But that's basically how you create a map. Um, these are a lot of fun because it's a visualization that you can't do as well in Excel. You can do with Power BI in Excel, you can do some maps, but I really do believe that the maps in the in Tableau are a lot more visually appealing or easier to read, uh, partially because uh, uh, Power BI draws it on a globe. So trying to center and things is a little more challenging. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and name this map and I will close this. So the next video you're gonna watch is how to do word clouds and heat maps in Tableau. All right, we'll see you next time.